Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May God's grace and peace be with you. May God fill our hearts with joy. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Thursday service, and a lovely welcome back to Canon Stephanie Pello, is, who is with us once again as our preacher today on this uh, Thursday service, St. Matthias Day. In the coming weeks, we will have other priests from around the area coming to also help us out in this service at St. Mark's. And so we begin with a colic for St. Matthias Day. Let us pray. Almighty God, who in the place of Judas chose Matthias to be numbered in the twelve, preserve your church from false apostles, and by the ministry of faithful pastors and teachers, keep us steadfast in your truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 people and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness. And falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. This became known to all residents of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their language, Hakeldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his homestead become desolate, and that let there be no one to live in it. And let another take his position or overseer. So one of the men who have accompanied us throughout the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two. Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, thank you once again for inviting me to participate in this morning's service. I have been inviting the people of St. Paul Shelburne to tune in to St. Mark's broadcast services, as we don't have the resources to provide those services ourselves. Today, as Peter said, is a special red-letter day on the Anglican calendar. It is a saint's day, St. Matthias, whose story we just read from the first chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. Now, if you were asked to name the Twelve Apostles, St. Matthias might be one whose name would not come to mind immediately. He was not in the starting lineup. As we heard from the reading, he was chosen to replace Judas Iscariot. So why, might you ask, was it necessary to replace Judas? Why did the fledgling church think they needed 12 apostles? Well, we read in the Hebrew scriptures that God was in a covenant relationship with Israel, formerly known as Jacob, and Jacob had 12 sons, the heads of the 12 tribes of Israel in ancient times. 
Now, it's pretty hard to remember their names also, unless you are familiar with a certain song from the musical Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat. The life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus brought the people into a new covenant with God. The 12 apostles represented the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, that is not to say that each apostle, each apostle came from a different tribe. We don't know that. It was more of a metaphorical representation. Eventually, there were more who became known as apostles. Saul, named Paul later, is the one who comes to mind right away. Now, as we read today, two men were suggested as suitable candidates because they had been with the disciples from early on and they were seen as faithful. And then the decision was made by Lot, throwing the dice or something similar. The, the thought behind that was that God would guide the outcome and the right man would be chosen. And perhaps Matthias was the right man for the job, but we don't really know because this short passage is all we hear of him in the Bible. The story does not tell us that Matthias was installed in the role, but we can surmise that there was a ceremony of some sort because ceremony was common among Near Eastern peoples. And we know from the Old Testament readings that the Jewish community placed a lot of emphasis on ceremony. Jesus himself created a ceremony out of eating bread and drinking wine. In the letters of Paul, we can read in more than one place that when leaders appointed another Christian to a mission or a ministry of some kind, they laid hands on them and they prayed over them. And that action is still part of our services of ordination to the diaconate and the priesthood today, and more commonly throughout the Anglican Church in confirmation and in the ministry of healing. I like to think of this as an ecclesiastical or holy hug. The touch of another human being has a way of reassuring us of comforting us, giving us strength. Hugs are crucial to the psychological development of infants and children, but they're also important throughout our lives. Some studies have even shown that a lack of hugs can allow people to be more susceptible to depression and even shorten a lifespan. We need human touch for wholeness and happiness in our lives. Yet right now, we find ourselves in a time when many of us are deprived of this very basic need. We are isolating. We are not gathering with our families and close friends. We're missing those opportunities for physical contact at a time when we need it most. It makes us sad to think of people suffering and dying from COVID-19 without a loved one near to hold their hand. Sad for those who have lost loved ones and cannot gather to mourn their loss with friends and family, and sad even for those who live alone and can't hug a loved one every day. And there is no remedy for this as yet. But time will bring about healing, and one day we will be able to embrace our loved ones freely again. I can only suggest that if you have a family around you, hug them now and often. And if you don't have loved ones physically close, keep them close as best you can. And know and believe that we are all held in the embrace of a loving God, a celestial and holy hug. Amen. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. That our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, us, Lord of glory. glory. That isolated and persecuted, persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, Lord of glory that he may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that by his power wars and famine and pandemics may cease throughout all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory that he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, and that they may be comforted and strengthened. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear Hear us, Lord of mercy. Loving God, whose peace passes all understanding, as we face this present pandemic and experience fear and anxiety, may we hear your voice bringing calm to the storms of our time. Strengthen those who work to limit the spread of infection, those who care for the sick, and keep us mindful of those most vulnerable. May we shape our living to protect one another, and may our changing habits, practices, and sacrifices be for the greater love of our community and all your people. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God.